Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Spirit of Fire at Home. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we want to welcome everybody to our online Bible study. Uh, we thank God for you tuning in tonight. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today, but we do believe that there's going to be something that's going to be shared. That's going to be a blessing to your life. So on behalf of Pastor Raquel and myself, we just want to say welcome to everybody. Uh, we know it's the holiday season. Some of y'all may be out and about even now as you're listening and watching this online on our streaming platforms and so in our social media platforms. And so we just thank God that you're tuning in tonight. Uh, you can be in many other platforms, but you're here tonight. So all of our Spirit of Fire folk, we love you guys. We appreciate you so much and we thank God for you. So all of our first timers, we want to just welcome you. Listen, for everybody that's out there, go ahead, take this opportunity to click your share. Share this with as many people as you can and invite them in tonight. Invite them to church. Invite them online to this message that's going to help transform and change their lives. We are in the series entitled Spirit Walkers, where we are talking about walking in the spirit and how what that means. And so we're starting off dealing with the fruit of the spirit. And then we're going to get into the gifts of the spirit and how the Holy Spirit operates and the power of God um, that's going to begin to manifest as faith is released. And as you begin to hear it, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more that you hear a thing, the more faith that you have for it, the more exposure that you have to the word in any area, the more you begin to grow in it. So we want to expose you to the word where the gifts of the spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit is and how he's going to help transform and change your life. And so we want to start tonight with that. So go ahead and share like right now. Let as many people know that we're on tonight. And so we thank God for that. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Let's jump into this. Father, we thank you for this. Another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords and think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of your word. We do approach the holy written word of God reverently, and we thank you right now for the truth and the revelation that comes out. We declare that every ear is anointed to hear, every heart open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. And we do cover the gifts of the spirit to be an operation and demonstration as needed. And so we thank you. We bless you for it. Now we declare it. So we declare peace and wholeness, great shalom upon your people, nothing missing, nothing broken and nothing lacking. And so father, we give you all praise and all glory for it. Now in Jesus mighty, holy and majestic name. Amen. And amen. Well, y'all, Let's jump and dive in this tonight. We're going to start with our foundational text that we've been dealing with. And that's out of the book of Galatians chapter five, verse 16. Um, and then verses 22 and 23 in the new living translation. I'm telling you, God wants to do something amazing. He wants to do something spectacular, supernatural in your life. When I say spectacular or supernatural, let's use that word because sometimes we think supernatural. We might automatically think spectacular grandiose, something real huge. Yes, God wants to do big things in your life, but sometimes there's a supernatural working going on that sometimes is not as obvious to the natural eye. But when you turn around and look over a period of time, you begin to realize, wait a minute, God has been doing something in me all along and he's been working in me. Now, I don't know about you, but since we've started this series that there's for me personally, I take it as a personal challenge for God to start dealing with me where a message is concerned. And then at the same time, he ministers to you as well. And so I'm more mindful of things now because that word is on the forefront. Whatever word is on the forefront at the time that comes to you on the forefront of your thinking, that's the thing you give attention to. So that's why it's important for us to develop good character so that now God's power can manifest at an all time high and that he can also begin to release to us things that we can handle now because our character is intact, because you don't want your gifts to get you to a place your character can't keep you. And so, so many people have fallen over the years. So many people have gotten to a place of prominence, but because they couldn't handle appetites, because they couldn't handle certain things, then they found themselves open to seduction and seductive spirits and temptation that drew them away from fulfilling the assignment God has for them. And so we don't want to be in that category. We want to learn from those. The Bible declares the way of the transgressor is hard. When you get away from God's way, 
that's when it's hard. And so we want to make things easier to manifest, easier to happen as we begin to develop this fruit in our lives. And one of the things I, I've shared is that the gifts of God, the gifts of the spirit manifest as the Holy Spirit wills. The fruit of the spirit develops as we will. As we begin to practice what God is saying to do, we develop in these fruits. And so over a period of time, so this is longevity here. This is something we're always working on. This is something we're always developing in and we're always growing in. All right. So let me go ahead and start here reading in the book of Galatians 5 and 16. It says, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. And so now when we see when the Holy Spirit guides us, we won't fulfill the lust. I think the, the King James says the lust of the flesh or the appetites of the flesh. And so in between 16 and 22, it gives a list of the appetites of the flesh. So in the beginning of this series, we dealt with those. We dealt with the works of the flesh that when we begin to walk in the spirit, it'll take care of that stuff. It's almost like do the do's and you won't do the don'ts. And so as you begin to walk in love and we're still in, and I got to keep it to the forefront of your thinking, we're still in this 40 day love challenge. This love day challenge to the end of the year where we're saying, now this is something we're supposed to be walking in period every day, but we just made it a challenge for you to develop in it for each and every day. You're developing some aspect of walking in love. And so when you look at what the scripture um, gives in the definition of love, you're going to work on your patience. You can work on being kind to people. You're going to work on your benevolence, your giving, your generosity. You're going to work on, you know, not speaking rude to not being rude to people or speaking nasty about people or making sarcastic comments or doing those things because God is saying this, I want you to develop in this love. I want you to begin to develop because no, because what's going to happen. I'm telling you that you don't realize how much you could possibly be in the flesh until you start walking in the spirit. When the Holy Spirit starts telling you things and you start taking God's word and intentionally applying it, sometimes that's when it triggers. And that's when you begin to see, man, I have really been using my mouth the wrong way all along. I've been dogging people out, making comments about people, making comments about situations where I should have kept my mouth shut. All of those things, treating people right. The person that cuts you off in traffic, that's not even listening, can't even hear you, not even looking at you. But now all of a sudden that anger that rises up, rises up in you, you got to settle yourself down. And so instead of pulling on the book of cuss and you start cussing up a storm and start saying things because the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, you begin to realize what's being developed in you. And so we want to work on that. And so then in verse 22, it says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So the law given by God to Moses, um, showing what the, how the people of God were supposed to live. He says this, when you're walking in the spirit, you don't have to fulfill the law because now the law has already been fulfilled by Jesus. But now when Jesus died and we was resurrected and we received Christ, that now God's nature abides in us. His laws have been written on our heart. He's given us the Holy Spirit to abide and live in us, to assist us in living this life. And so now when we are guided by the dictates of the Holy Spirit and what he's telling us to do, how he tells us to live, how he tells us to deal with people, that'll be the, that'll be the driving force because the Spirit and the Word agree. And so he's always going to cause you to walk in alignment with God's Word and God's will. He's always going to push you in the right direction, but you're going to have to listen to him. You're going to have to be sensitive to the, his leading and his guidance and his direction. And so one of those things is those promptings of the spirit where you feel in your heart, you're supposed to do something, whether it's you're supposed to do something for someone. Um, when Holy Spirit begins to talk to you a lot of times, it is that more authoritative voice where he's directing you. You sense um, on the inside, that strong impression, go do this for so-and-so, go set up this, go get this done, go get this objective accomplished. And so when you begin to do that, you're developing yourself. And so with each act of obedience is the time of you developing. 
Whenever you obey God, you always develop more in his character. The more you obey what his word says, the more you do it, the stronger you become in it. All right. And so now I, as I was writing this out, I began to think about this, um, <laughs> that you got a lot of people that talk about, you know, well, and, and they identify, you know, with their astrological signs and they say, you know what, you know, I'm a Pisces, or I'm a, I'm a Gemini. You know how Geminis are. We just two faced, you know, one minute I'm up, one, next minute I'm down. And so now you're identifying with that versus identifying with your identity in Christ. And so we as Christians don't follow those signs. We follow what God's word says. We follow what the Holy Spirit says. And just because you say you have a natural inclination to be a certain way, that does not absolve you of the responsibility to begin to walk in the spirit. Uh, when Holy Spirit says to walk in love, you can't say, well, I just don't, you know, just because that's how I am. That's how we are. You know, Scorpio's a certain way. You know, Leo's, Virgo's, you know, act funny, real petty people. No, you're not petty if you're walking in love. You can on intentionally, because watch this, your emotions reside in your soul and you can renew your soul. You can renew your mind with the word of God to begin to act different of how you're normally acting. That's why he says walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust, appetites, or desires that your flesh wants to do. So even your personality traits and characteristics, you can say, well, I'm an impatient person. I like what I want. I want it done now, right now. But then you still gonna have to walk in patience and you're going to have to develop patience. You're going to have to develop some long suffering. That's a, that's one of the fruits of the spirit we already dealt with. And so you're going to know how to have to deal with situations sometimes for a long period of time. And that means you got to stay in faith and you got to be consistent and you got to be constant and you got to be the same. No matter what your natural inclination is, now you can develop this fruit that's on the inside of you. It's already there. You have to develop it. And so if you want to become more like Christ and that to me, that's, that's some of the issue here. Do you really want to walk like Jesus? Do you really want, do you really want to be a Christian or do you want the benefits of heaven and the pleasures of the flesh and just be able to mingle the two together and just walk? And that's what a lot of people want. Let's just, let's just be straight up. Let's call a spade a spade. Let's, let's deal with this. Because if Christians are serious about being Christians, that means being Christ-like. And so this fruit of the spirit that develops, that's been deposited in our hearts, we got to walk in it. Okay. And so we got to know how to say, okay, I'm going to be long suffering. I'm going to be loving. I'm going to be gentle. I'm going to be kind. And so tonight I wanted to deal with, um, the fruits of gentleness and goodness. Okay. And I really want to deal with this. And so when God says you can walk in these types of behaviors, we must put forth the effort to train our emotions to, and our thought processes to say, this is how I'm going to be. I'm not going to snap on this person. You know, I'm not trying to be a doormat or anything. Walking in love doesn't mean being a doormat. Sometimes you're going to have to speak up, but it's how you do it. It's how you address people. It's how you address situations. And so you can confront the issue without being rude or mean to the person than when you're dealing with an issue. And God will give you wisdom. I'm telling you, he'll show you how to do it, but you have to yield to this process. All right, let's get going. Now, gentleness. What, 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 what is gentleness? What this fruit of gentleness? It means or it denotes to be fitting. It means equitable. It means fair to be a fair person, uh, to be moderate or forbearing, not insisting on the letter of the law. Now that was interesting when I saw that by this definition is, it's not interested on, uh, insisting on the letter of the law. Sometimes when people who just go straight by the letter of the law, it's almost like they're the same ones like crucify them. It's like, you know what? The letter says do this. So you know what? You are supposed to be punished or you are supposed to be this, that, or the other. And I get it. There are people, there are situations where that punishment is necessary in the judicial systems, things of that nature. But when you just hold people always by the letter, but see now you got to understand the intent because really the punishment is in place to really help change the behavior of the individual and God will give you wisdom. And so if you see that that person has a repented heart, then you got to be gentle and forbearing and merciful and graceful enough 
to release them because they're really trying to make it right versus holding things constantly against people who are trying to make things right and to get things right. And so listen, you got to realize God's been faithful and gentle with you. Then you got to be the same way with other people. And this is why it's important that we got to walk in this thing and become gentle with people. Now it also means it expresses, um, considerateness. Uh, it looks humanely and reasonably at the facts of a case. Now that's interesting. It, it looks from a humane standpoint, a reasonable standpoint. That means, okay, when you're looking at uh, everything involved, stop and see what's really being addressed. And so now your heart begins to go towards really truth and justice and, and the right outcome to prevail. Because a lot of times that right outcome really is a changed individual or a changed situation in this matter. So you want to be mindful of that. It also means excellence in character, excellence in character to be excellent in character. So if we're being excellent in something, we want to do it right because it's right and to do it the right way to do what's right because it's right. And to do it right, to do what, what's the right thing to do. What does God say to do in this situation? Like he told Peter, how often should I, when Peter asked, how often should I um, forgive them? Seven times. He said, okay, 70 times seven. Okay. What, what you mean? 490 times. If somebody trespasses against me and does me wrong, I'm still supposed to forgive them no matter how many times they did it, you know, and then keeping scorecards. So really the issue is I'm setting my heart intentionally to be able to forgive people quickly and setting my mindset up to say, if somebody wrongs me, I'm not going to hold this anger or bitterness in me. And listen, that, that takes work, man. That, that takes something that listen, I get it. It takes something, but that love has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy ghost. And so God is doing this. God had to send Jesus and God had to show us mercy so that watch this, his holiness wouldn't destroy us. Let me, let me say it this way. The sin that we walked in, the sin that we lived in, that when it comes into the presence of a holy God will be destroyed. But God is saying, he said this, I don't want my creation destroyed. I'm going to send my son to die so that now they can come and have access to me and my spirit can come and dwell on the inside of them for them to have fellowship and communion with me. And so now as they have fellowship and communion with me, now I can begin to transform and change their lives that they can be the person that I always intended them to be. And so when God says, I want you to turn yourself over to me, I want you to yield to my spirit, yield to this fruit, yield to how I say to do it, yield to being a person of honor, yield to being a person of integrity. What's the right thing? Uh, I'm trying to, I was giving to make a statement about something it, it's, but I, I want to be mindful of what I'm saying. Um, I had a conversation with somebody not too long ago and they were talking about how people within this certain organization that they were, um, uh, some of the employees were doing things and it was like, man, people are acting one way, you know, they, you know, it's like when people on the job put in that they worked when they actually didn't. And that's, that's lack of integrity on their part, whether somebody is with you or not see true integrity and character is seen in the unsupervised areas of your life when nobody's watching. That's when your integrity really is being shown when, you know, it's almost like your character is shown in treating people. How do you treat someone who can do nothing for you, who, who you, you don't benefit in any way from the interaction? Do you, or you think that they don't count? See, every person counts and every person matters, but it's a thing where say, wait a minute, if this person can't help me get to my objective, then I just dismiss them. It's like the person, and there've been preachers who've done that, going out to dinner with other folk, and then the preacher saw how that preacher treated the waitress in the restaurant or the waiter. And it was like, you just showed yourself because you feel as though that this person isn't of importance. And so that shows poor character. So you go out here and try to preach the walls down, but then 
in this setting, you treating people like garbage and like trash and speaking down to them and demeaning them, thinking that you being holy or that you being, you know, anointed or you think that you up here while they down here. Man, that's a bunch of junk. That's a bunch of garbage. And so you're not supposed to function in that light and in that way. So God wants you to be gentle. He wants you to be humane. He says in the book of Titus chapter three, verses one through two, in the New Living Translation, he says it like this. He says, remind the believers to submit to the government and its officers. They should be obedient, always ready to do what is good. They must not slander anyone and must avoid quarreling. Instead, they should be gentle and show true humility to everyone. If this scripture right here does not fit to what we're dealing with in our society, society today, in this culture, of how God tells us to respond to governmental authorities. We are quick to trash people. We are quick to talk down to, you know, it's almost like because you have certain cops that have had bad performances and have done awful things that now any authority that now you ready to rebel. If you see it now, people are so ready to rebel against authority is ridiculous. Children in classrooms. I mean, recording it and talking to teachers like they trash like never before. And I told somebody this not too long ago. I knew that the spirit of lawlessness would enter into this country at an all time high. And it's like people bucking authority like you would not believe when authority has been ordained of God. And he said, all authority has been ordained of me and how you deal with them. Now you may say, well, what if they wrong? How are they supposed to, you know, anything. So now if you have a bad interaction with somebody, listen, there are many times where maybe um, instead of being ready to snap at somebody, you say, okay, I'm going to now take this high road. We say when they go low, we go high. They say, okay, I'm going to speak life. I'm going to be loving. Now, everything in you may say, you know what? Rip them from head to toe. Go for it. And I've been there. I know what that's like. I know when it's like, Lord, and I mean, I've had conversations with God and it's like, Lord, just, just let me at him one time. Just, just let me, just let me let her rip. Just, I mean, and it's like, nope, no, you're developing, you're growing. I don't care what they did. I'm telling you what to do now. I'll deal with them later. You do what I'm telling you to do. Because now if I want to grow and develop, because now as I'm praying for greater, and believing for greater, my character needs to match up to even what I'm believing for. And so that means I gotta be ready to, to, to have a platform to preach and to reach the world. You're gonna have persecution. You're gonna have people talking about you. You're gonna have people come against the message that you preach because if they came against me, they're gonna come against you. And so you got to be ready to handle that. Your family got to be able to handle that. How can they handle? I mean, it, it's everything. How can they handle somebody talking about, how can my children handle somebody talking about their dad? And then they ready to fight. Like you can't be ready to fight everybody to say something. People are going to say what they say, but now we got to now be able to block that out and say, nope, this is not going to stop me from moving forward. So Satan knows, listen, he knows your quirks. He knows things that get you riled up. And if it's that one simple thing, he'll keep throwing that thing at you until you pass the test. So it's time for you to pass those tests. It's time for you to not be hindered by how other people respond and react. Don't be a reactive person, be proactive. Already come in with the mindset that I'm gonna do what's right because it's right and I'm gonna do it right and you will not get me out of character. The Bible declares in, in James 3, 17, I don't have much time so I gotta get rolling. The James 3, 17 in the New Living Translation, it says this. It says, but the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace loving. Wisdom is peace loving. It's gentle at all times and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It's full of mercy. Wisdom is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. When we're walking in this wisdom, it's peaceful, it's gentle at all times, it's what I like this, it's willing to yield to others. So many times we're looking to promote our, this is a self-promotion society like we have never seen. 
And some of those things aren't bad, but some is like, it's all about me and self and promoting self. And so we got to be mindful of that. Do you promote others? Do you prefer, they even talk, the Bible talks about preferring your brother uh, above yourself. Do you promote others? Do you encourage others in what they're doing? Do you give them a shout out? Do you show that, you know what? No, I'm going to develop in this gentleness and this goodness and this purity and this kindness. And even watch this. Even if you don't like someone, you got to work through your emotions and you got to say, uh, uh, emotions, I'm going to override you and I'm going to change how I think even towards that individual. And so now, because I'm looking to develop in this love and develop in this forgiveness and develop in this gentleness and kindness and meekness and this gratitude and this joy that I have, I'm not holding it against them any longer. Some of you, and I'm going to come back again, you got to let it go. And there are people, they may never come back to apologize to you. You're going to have to let it go. And you're going to have to begin to celebrate, even if you see that they have a victory in their lives, that, that watch this, that it may not start off being genuine, quote unquote, but you're saying this, I'm choosing to develop this fruit in my heart and in my mind and in my life. So I'm going to rejoice with them in Jesus name. Glory to God. Congratulations. And so, and I'm not going to be phony with it. Nope. It's not being phony because I am intentionally developing in the, this fruit of the spirit. So me telling them congratulations and me sowing into them and me blessing them and me praying for them is me developing this character on the inside of me so that watch this. I can become better. Amen. All right. So now, uh, let me, let me, now let's go real quick to goodness. I want to deal with this. I got about 10 minutes or so. Um, I want to do, I want to talk about goodness by definition. Goodness means just a state of being good. It means the moral or physical qualities, which constitute Christian excellence. It's the moral or physical qualities that constitute Christian excellence. So goodness is, is rooted in excellence. Is, is, is moral virtue, is kindness, or like this, it's benevolence or giving. A, good, a person who's developed in goodness is a benevolent person, a giving person, a person who flows out of this love, this agape, to say, I want to do what's right because it's right and do it the right way. So even in my giving, I want to present it in such a way that is done even in excellence. It could be something where you have a giving spirit, but you don't do it in an excellent way. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to give somebody some clothes. Okay. But then I give you a bunch of wrinkled clothes that I ain't put in the washer or cleaned up or folded up or have on a proper hanger or protected. I'm just having it like here, just giving it to you in any kind of way. That's not, that's not God. That's not God. That's not the spirit of God. That's not the spirit of grace and giving and generosity or the spirit of goodness. God's goodness, because you realize God has been good to you. So you want to be good to others. You want to sow to the level that you want to receive. If you want to see something good, sow it good. If you want to see it right, give it right. Give it with the right attitude. The Bible talks about giving with the right attitude. Don't give grudgingly or of necessity because God loves a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. So don't give out of, you know, I'm going to just do it because now they're going to, they're going to think a certain way or you doing it out of necessity. It's like, you don't want to be looked at wrong. And so that's the reason why you give. No, give out of the goodness of your heart, develop it. If you're a stingy person, man, you're not going to receive anything good because now your heart is so full. It's like the Grinch. It's like you remember the Grinch and the cartoon that at the end, his heart became so big that at first his heart was so small. That's why he was bitter. He was angry. Then his heart got big. And man, all of the, the, the children of Whoville, he, like, he would start giving gifts. He was taking them. Then he started giving it back. And the people loved him for it. Listen, stop being the Grinch in your family. Stop being the Grinch in your house. Stop being the Grinch in your ministry. Stop being the Grinch around people. Be a person who's good towards God. Why? Because God's been good towards you. And so when you have a benevolent spirit, Jesus said it like this in Luke 18, 19. He said, Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good except one. That is God. We know that God is the source of all goodness. Listen, God is essentially and absolutely 
and consummately good. You got to understand that God is a good God, even though now some people say, well, why do bad, ha bad things happen to good people? Why do bad things happen then if God is so good? You still forgot that there's an adversary called the devil who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life, the Zoe life, the God kind of life, and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. And so he wants to do good to you and to make you happy. God is not trying to make you miserable. He's trying to give you life abundantly. He gave us life abundantly. And so you got to see God is good. And so preachers even taught this stuff, this junk over the years. It's almost like you going through what you're going through because God trying to teach you something. And the reason why they say that is because they don't know who God is. And so now they're trying to say, God, put that sickness on you because he's trying to teach you how to be strong, how to go through things. God, listen, sickness and disease ain't coming from him. He, listen, he, listen, he sent Jesus to die to take away sickness and disease. So why are he going to put it on you? So I'm telling you, God is not trying to, 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 to beat you up. Now, listen, there are things that go on in your life, but even in the midst of it, he says this. Listen, this is how Jesus said. This is a perfect scripture. Jesus says, in this world, you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Why? Because I've overcome the world. So when the tribulation comes, you need to focus on the fact that God is good, that God loves you and that you love God. But more than that, God loves you. And that means he's going to walk you through this situation and grant you wisdom to show you how to come out of it. And when you come out of it, you're going to come out in the power of the spirit. You're going to come out knowing that I'm strong enough to handle anything that comes my way because the same God that delivered me from the mouth of the lion and the mouth of the bear shall now deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine or this other situation because God loves me. And watch this. I recognize the covenant that I have with my God so I know I can overcome this thing. And so we need to be mindful of God's goodness. Now, in the book of Matthew 5, um, 43 through 48, I'm going to go here real quick. Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 48, it says this. You have heard it have been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you that you may be the children of your father, which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and send the rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them, which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same. And if we, you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so, but watch this, be ye therefore perfect or mature, even as your father, which is in heaven is perfect. So he says, okay, we can develop this perfection, this maturity by now doing and activating this love and demonstrating this love. Pray for those, bless your enemies, love your enemies. Anybody that's done something against you, that's done something against your race, that's done so. listen, you can't be a Christian and walk in the same level of hate as somebody that's not in Christ. You, you, we are not supposed to do that. God has commanded us to walk in love. He's not to be victims all our lives. We got, listen, nobody can hold you down if you don't allow them to. Nobody can. We have great power and we have great authority. And so number one, it starts mentally, inwardly. What is it that you've been holding on to well, somebody said something about you, talked about you, treated you wrong, didn't pay you the way that they were supposed to pay you, didn't treat you the way they were supposed to treat you, they didn't respond the way you thought they should have responded, and some stuff ain't on the other person, it's on your expectation of what you thought that they were supposed to do. And so now you got to adjust that. And so now you mad at somebody because they didn't meet your expectation, and they never said that they were willing to do what you expected them to do. You just put the expectation on them and then blame them when they didn't fulfill the expectation that you had in your head about them in the relationship. Yep, yeah, that's for somebody. That's for somebody right there. So you need to go ahead and loose that expectation and let it go and begin to pray for them, begin to love them, and watch the, the love of God begin to grow in your heart. Yeah, here we go. So it's, it's just time to do this. Watch this. In the book of Luke. Now... <laughs> 
John Maxwell made this quote, and I wanted to quote this when I saw it. Followers of God are to be leaders of men and live at a higher level. Followers of God are to be leaders of men and live at a higher level. We are called as Christians to live at a higher level. This is why I don't care. Listen, people who say that Christianity is for the weak minded are fools. They don't have a clue what this life is about. It takes great strength to do this. That's why Dr. King um, wrote a book years ago, Strength to Love. Strength to Love. It takes strength to love. It takes strength. It takes strength to love. When people have dogged you out, when people have belittled you, and now you got you to gotta fight to stay in that love circle. You got to fight to stay in that spirit of love. That even when they say something and everything, ooh boy, that flesh rise up and you want to woo, go up one side and down the other. Knock them out. Cuss them out. Some people kill. And they allow that rage that's in their heart to come out and to now attack. Now, the book of Luke 6, 43 and 45, I only got a couple minutes here. The book of Luke, um, chapter 6, verses 43 and 45 say this. It says, for a good tree brings forth not, um, bringeth not forth corrupt fruit. So a good tree doesn't bring forth corrupt fruit. Neither does a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure or whatever is in your heart is what you're going to bring forth. That which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. So you got to be mindful of what is it that's in your heart. Whatever is coming out of your mouth is that which is in your heart, is what's in your heart. And God is saying, you got to check that. What are you allowing to get deposited in your heart by what you're hearing through your eye gate, ear gate, and then out of your mouth is going to come out? What is getting in you? Some stuff you need to turn off. Because the minute you see it, it riles you up. It gets your flesh stirred up, the anger stirred up. And now all of a sudden, anybody that you see that's connected with something like that, you ready to go after them. So it could be a thing, that person minding their business. They say one little thing, and now you fly right the handle. Why? Because now you consume so much of this stuff over a period of time, it's changed how you think. Many of you watching, I had to check myself in this matter that I begin to find myself getting angry about situations where I used to be a lot calmer than I began to be now. And I had to check myself and God, the Holy Ghost had to deal with me that it was like, I found myself getting angry, just seeing certain people. It was like, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Look at them. Yeah. I know what I did that. We all know what it is. We know what it is. And they may not even be that. Versus love being ever ready to believe the best. And I'm not going to judge you based off of what somebody else did. I'm going to judge you off your own merits and character. And so listen, you might be a person, as I interact with you, you're nothing like I thought you might be because I gave you an opportunity to show your heart, to show who you are. And so, so many times we got to cancel that, y'all. We got to stop jumping on the bandwagon. Too many bandwagon people that's out there that's jumping on just because the majority says it. Just because the majority says it doesn't make it right. And so you got to be strong enough to go against the grain and to do what God says to do. Even when all your little Christian friends, you know, when I <laughs> see even sounding like that, your little, your little sound petty saying it that way. Your Christian friends who's supposed to walk like Christ, but they talking just like the world. Are you going to have enough strength to stand up and say what's right because it's right and to say it the right way and to challenge them to do what's right? Now, we believers, we got the Holy Ghost in us. God told us to do Jesus himself. Since y'all talking about y'all Jesus freaks, y'all shouting Jesus. Jesus said this is how we supposed to act. We supposed to do good to them. We supposed to pray for them. How can we bless them? What you mean? How are we going to bless them? Man, no, we ain't blessing nobody. They ain't bless us. See? You're not walking in the fruit of it. You're not developing in this fruit. But then you go right back, go before God in prayer. Lord, change my situation. Lord, do this for me. Lord, do that for me. And God was setting you up the whole time to get your character right. 
and then you just missed the opportunity. And then you trying to figure out why your faith ain't working. Why? Because your love ain't working. Faith worketh by love. And if your love ain't right, your faith ain't going to operate at a high level. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's the book. So if you believe in for, see, I got, see, I see why God's setting us up. I see why he told me to preach on this first. Because going into this year, the word that I got from God for this year coming up, oh my goodness. And the things that's supposed to transpire and take place and the supernatural that he wants to release, this has to be dealt with. This has to be dealt with now. You got to work on now releasing things out of your heart and training yourself in this thing so that when this thing hit and God starts telling you to move, he can trust you. Can God trust you? Because he sees that you are willing to work on areas in your life that nobody else can see, but God can see. Because he's trying to get you there. It's time to graduate. It's time to graduate. And so God says, I want you to walk in this thing. I want you to walk in the spirit. Don't be fulfilled by the lust of the flesh. And there are five, just five quick things, and I'm shutting it down now, that God told us to do where his goodness is concerned. Number one is cleave to it. Out of the book of Romans 12, 19, he says, don't just pretend to love others, but really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to, that, to what is good. Hate what's wrong. We got to have that level of hate the sin, yes, and love the person. And I know sometimes that's hard to, to separate the two. Because sometimes when that hatred is coming out of their heart and they're walking in certain things, it's like because you love them, you want to administer the grace of God, the goodness of God to them. But now God will give you wisdom along with that to know how to do that. Number two, he wants us to just do it. Do this thing. Practice it. In the book of Romans 13 and 3, it says, For rulers are not a terror to good works. Rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. You're not worrying about things when you're doing what's right. It's the ones that's not doing right that's more susceptible to that. Now, some of y'all may say, Well, I, listen, I won't do nothing wrong. I'm, I'm not even, I'm not going to judge that right now. Because I've come to learn this. Just because people say they won't do nothing wrong, because they may not even identify what they're doing is wrong. And it may very well be. You got to judge that. I, listen, I'm one that's bold enough to say it. Sometimes you just can't say, well, no, I won't, I won't do nothing but. But yeah, but what you was doing set you up for that and you didn't realize it set you up for it. Okay. Ooh, yeah. I could really go some places with that one. All right. Some things you, you got caught up in because you positioned yourself there. Because you was in the wrong place. And watch this, which violated scripture. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Just because you had evil associations, even though you weren't necessarily the person, but just your association, association with people in certain areas and spheres, because of that, you were in a place you shouldn't have been in. If you wouldn't have gone there, you wouldn't have got caught up. Well, I ain't do nothing, but you went. That's why you got caught up. You shouldn't have been there. It's stuff like that, folks. It's stuff like that. I'm sorry. I've been there where that stuff has kept me out of trouble in my life. I just didn't go certain places because I knew if I put my flesh in a position to sin, it would. I mean, with temptation. Mike, come on, man. Get nice with us. You don't know what it's like. Go ahead, get nice. I was like this, man. I act stupid enough as it is when I ain't drunk. Just imagine how I would if I did and if I got high. Now all of my senses... Ain't, ain't there, ain't full of there. My awareness ain't fully sharp. Now I'm doing this stuff and now I get myself in trouble just because I'm in that vicinity. I can share some things, but I'm telling you, God says this, I want you to follow after this. That's number three, follow after it. He says, see that none, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 15, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow, every, but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. So we need to follow after that which is good. Then he says, work it. Work it, work it, work it, work goodness. In um, Romans 2.10, he says, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. So now, you, then in Ephesians 6, 6 through 8, I just want to read this. 
not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, from the heart, do it from the heart with good will, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Do it as unto the Lord and not to men. If the Lord was there with you, how would you do it? Do it as to the Lord and not to men. When you work as unto the Lord and not to men, the men, you ain't got to be concerned. The men, listen, if I had an employee in my company that's working as unto the Lord, I don't have to be concerned about that employee because they're going to do what's right. They're going to be honorable. They're going to work hard whether I'm right in front of them or whether I'm in my office and they back um, in the warehouse or someplace or in another office doing something. I ain't got to worry about them stealing time from the company. I ain't got to worry about them putting that they work eight hours and they only work five hours and they were just off on some long three hour break when they weren't supposed to. Listen, and for some of y'all working at home and people can't be right there with you, that listen, a lot of people go through that even now. Just little things and you wonder why something is working against your prosperity. It's the bad character. And then lastly, imitate it. All of this ties in together. Third John 1 and 11 says, Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doth, that doeth evil, that doeth good is of God. But he that does evil have not seen God. We got to do good. We got to do good. We got to walk in this gentleness and we have to walk in goodness. We have to be generous. We have to be good to people, good in these situations. It's just something about just being right and good to people, man. It goes a long way. It goes a long way. Don't step on people. You know, some people's like, don't step on people on the way up because you might need them on the way down. But listen, whether you coming down or not, that's not the right way to treat people. Do what's right because it's right. Treat people well. Speak to people. Interact with people. Love on people. Let's be Christians and do this thing. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. We bless you. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your glory. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you that right now that you begin to speak to the hearts of your people, that if there's anybody out there who's never made Jesus the Lord of their life, to let them know that there is a no-so salvation. Give them that confidence and that assured, assuredness that they can function and walk in this victory and that they can spend eternity with you. We bless you and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if somebody is under the sound of my voice, you've never, made, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, but you want to tonight. I want you to simply make this confession of your faith. The Bible declares this too. When you get born again, the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. That's in Romans 5 and 5. That God pours his nature in you. And so now you have this ability to walk in this fruit. But now to be a candidate for it, you must be born again. Accept Jesus as your Lord. The Bible clearly says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead, you shall be saved. I just simply want you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord. And I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, if you prayed that prayer with me, listen, you are born again and you're a Christian. Listen, you are going to heaven. The Bible says if you believe that, what you just prayed, you're going to heaven. Listen, you're born again. Don't ever question your salvation. You don't have to keep asking Jesus to come into your life every time you feel like you done messed up. You ain't got to re-pray the prayer of salvation when you feel like you done screwed up in life and all this because you felt like, you know what, I lost my salvation just like I lose a pen or something. No. No, 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 no. The blood of Jesus is there to cleanse you and to wash you from all your sins, past, present, and even future. That he's there to cover you, to wash you, to protect you. Because he knows, listen, you're growing, you're developing. There are going to be mistakes that are made, even as you're growing up in this thing. And the blood of Jesus is so powerful. It has washed and removed your sin as far as the east is from the west. And so I just want you to know that. Well, 
at this time, we want to give an opportunity for those um, that want to get filled with the Holy Spirit and with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. It's a simple prayer that you can pray. Just like we prayed that prayer of faith, I want you to pray this prayer with us. It's as simple as this. If you've already gotten born again, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you must be born again. Because now the Bible talks about um, not putting new wine in old wine skins. That's just giving a correlation of our brand new spirit. That our spirit, which is brand new and born again, is now created for the Holy Spirit to house and to fill us and to dwell in us. So I want you to say this. Say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. You're now on the inside of me. I now have the ability to speak with other tongues. As you give me the utterance, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, for some of you, you, you feel a welling up. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. The Holy Spirit will give you the utterance as you do the talking. And he will assist you in praying in the Spirit. And you can do this every day. Practice every day. Every day. Just thank the Holy Spirit for filling you, for being there. And it says, now help me, Holy Spirit, to pray out. Give me utterance to pray in other tongues. And just open up your mouth, add voice, begin to form words. He'll help you. He'll help you. He's not going to make you do it. But as you begin to do it, in and of your own will, just like I'm talking in English, I can go over, What am I doing? Because now by faith, it's all done by faith. I've been doing this for years. But I remember Monday night, 1991, my junior year in high school, I remember getting filled with the Holy Spirit in a service. And I remember just the flow of the Spirit coming out of me, praying in tongues like I've been praying for years. Everybody's experience is different. Some, they start off a little slow, but then begin to build. And so, but I want you to practice the presence of God. Practice praying. And as you begin to pray, Holy Spirit is there to help you and to assist you. Lastly, there may be somebody that you don't have a church home, but you want to get connected. I recommend this ministry to you. If you want to become a member, a partner of this ministry, I want you to simply fill out the information at Spirit of Fire. Send us your information, rather, at info at spiritoffire.us. Info at spiritoffire.us. Or you can send us a message on our social media platforms that you want to connect and join this ministry. We're located here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia, but we also are building our e-church, our online worshipers, online members as well. People in other states, other countries, other cities around the world. We declare, God told me, he says, build locally, but think globally. So we just thank God for that. And we believe that the word of God in this place will help transform and change your life. So, and lastly, uh, we're going to give you an opportunity to give tonight. We do believe it's a form of worship as well. There's some information coming up on your screen as to different ways in which to give. Um, you, there's a QR code um, that comes up where you can scan it. It'll take you to a secured page, a giving page. Your information is not sold to third parties, anything like that. Um, if you're giving via Cash App, we're also asking that you provide your name or email address as well. I know some of you, when you put it in, you can't pull up your name, but you want to make sure that you have an email address so that at least we can send you information concerning your giving. All right. We love you guys. We appreciate you so much. I declare and decree that the best is yet to come for you. I speak God's blessing. I speak God's favor and I speak increase over your lives in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you all. Love you. See you next time. Peace.